Hi, I'm Zaina, and this is my husband, Chad. This is Akina, this is Tavi, and this is Baby Gray. We're a vegan, minimalist family of five living part-time on the road and part-time in a tiny house. Be sure to subscribe to join the adventure. Oh, and check out livingzeal.com for more info on our brand new plant-based cookbook. So just two seasons ago, this was us. Sending off felines in here. Oh, I broke the ice cube, my bad. It's really chilly, huh? It's so cold. So we thought we could make a video that might help some of you guys who are living in your conversion um, and similar conditions <laughs> and similar conditions. Um, so this video is gonna recap and go over everything that we learned when we were living in the winter in our conversion here in Colorado. We actually held out installing our cubic mini wood stove until I think it was like late October. Yeah. Um, until we couldn't take it anymore. But as soon as we installed it, I felt like we burned it pretty much from that point until like March. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, like constantly. When it's in the dead of winter, you don't really want to use the wood stove because I used it like all day, every day. Mm -hmm. I probably lit like 300 fires in this stinking thing. Yeah. But having not used it in like a month, it was, was really kind of nice. A sweet treat. It yeah, was kind of nice. The first thing I had back. to do um, was cut the wood. Mm -hmm. So my love here is preparing our firewood for the night. We still have, we had tons of wood left over. We weren't really sure how we were going to use it or when we were going to use it. But sure enough, come to Oregon and it feels like smack dab in the middle of winter again. Those were, that was like the only tool I saved from the initial build. And I don't know why I was like, I'm going to save my giant chop saw. It's the most I'm practical one of them all. Really glad that I did. <laughs> <clears throat> You got the fire started that quickly? Yeah, babe. When this, yeah. when you used to first start be making our fires, it would take like... I would get so frustrated, especially if I didn't have any um, fire starters. It would take forever. But now, that took you like five minutes. Yeah, it's going. Aside from using the wood stove to stay warm, which was the main thing we used, it got down to like single digits, uh, so we also had to use a propane heater. Okay, so we just came back to the bus, fire was out, there's no propane going, so it's pretty chilly in here right now. I uh, just got a fire going, but this is an opportunity where I love the propane heater, because the fire is going to take about half an hour to get to a point where it warms up the air around here. Propane heater, come over here, give it a couple clicks, get that pilot light going, and then you have low or high. For this instance, I'm going to go ahead and fire up on high, and then this thing starts to heat the air immediately. It gets this whole bus really hot within, I'd say, 15 minutes. Yeah. So that's one for the propane heater as far as if you need heat now. Uh, just the control, being able to control the heat on the propane heater is definitely uh, a big plus. Being able to turn it off if you're too hot, being able to turn it down, being able to turn it up, that's a huge advantage. So another thing to consider, con with the wood stove, is it's messy. Uh, we have to clean out ash um, at least, you know, at least once a day, sometimes more than that. You get ash picked up right here. When you go to mix things around inside, sometimes embers fall out onto the floor. The floor is always messy right here because we're dealing with that. And then you have to store the wood, which, you know, just makes a big mess all around it. I find the mess to be kind of charming because I love, like, you know, just the fireplace. I love the kind of the country feel. And you definitely get that country feel with the fireplace um, and having all your wood lying around. We also have to cut our wood which is a whole nother process, but it's also part of the charm of living in a bus. And um, I really enjoy the routine of having the wood stove. I would never trade this for anything, really. I really love having the wood stove. The heater was a definite must to have in the bus with us. I think the combination between the wood stove and the heater are like essential. However, once we started heating it in all these various ways, we were trying to figure out how to insulate so that all of this amazing heat that we captured would stay inside the entire time. It really starts with insulation. That was definitely the biggest consideration for us when we were doing our conversion. Um, we knew that it didn't really matter what heating mechanism we use for the winter if the actual structure itself wasn't really well insulated. So kind of our method and design to deal with that was to completely block off the 
front so you can see um, there's just like a complete wall here. In the back we have another wall which separates our garage. And this really gives us the ability to regulate the space in between these two walls. Don't be afraid to cover up windows. We didn't want to lose the windows right by behind our heads because we liked laying in bed and looking out the window, but it was like uh, <laughs> our pillow started freezing. My pillow froze to the window several times where I had to like peel it away from the window. Yeah, the moisture from the propane heater inside the bus got on somehow with our pillow, I guess from the sweat on our head as well. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, would literally create these like ice patches between our pillow, the head and the window. Yeah, it was at that point we decided just to close those <laughs> off too. So that's something to be aware of. If you're gonna burn propane, especially in a van, because it's so much harder to install a wood stove in a van, uh, just be aware of the wet heat. The ceiling is melting. It was a sheet of ice. Oh, just dripped on my phone. Well, it's just a sheet of ice. And now, and then if you can see my breath. Just on my phone again. Um, um, blankets are really important. Obviously, duh, blankets are important. But you're going to want extras and then extras for your extras because in the evening when you can't be continuously maintaining that heat, you will get so, so cold. I mean, I remember it being below freezing probably a handful of times in our bus. I mean, the insulation helps, but in the dead of winter yeah, time... when the stove goes out. Yeah, it, it gets crazy cold. So I would recommend having as many blankets as your friends and family want to get rid of, you just take them all into your bus. And I'd recommend layers. So I'm not gonna show you guys all the goods, but this is a process. It's probably take five minutes anyway. Yeah, this is a process of getting all Almost of like his old clothes off. Pair of pants. So we took off two pairs of socks, got one pair of pants. Um, how many more pants do we have? I don't remember now. <laughs> Okay, They've so... They'll just come off and on as one one unit. <laughs> Chad is like an 88-year-old grandpa when it comes to layers. He'll be undressing at the end of the day, and I didn't That's even cool. realize that he had been wearing three pairs of pants all throughout the day. Little note to me. I didn't realize I was warm all day. Mm-hmm, yeah. You're freezing your little tushy off. Yeah, clothes are very, very crucial. I think that they are underestimated how important it is to be dressing correctly, which I seem to always have a hard time dressing appropriately for the weather. It got really hard when we would go completely off grid for a couple reasons. Getting the solar, keeping the solar panels clean was a chore all in itself. For you. Yeah, for me. Okay, I'm gonna run you through my tools for snow removal. Ice scraper. Heck yeah. Free for opening a bank account. Actually, I got that from my last apartment. Apex, 5510. <laughs> also, <clears throat> broom. It works well. This is by Libman. It was purchased at King Supers for $7.99. Alrighty. Alright, I gotta go through the ceiling. Top the top. Okay. okay. You know what? I actually had a premonition. A premonition about this happening. I was just talking to you about this happening. Okay, and I was like, there's gonna be so much snow that's gonna fall in here. And you were like, it's no. fine. <laughs> It's fine. Snowing in the bus. Snowing in the bus. I can't see the solar panels. <laughs> Cause there's snow everywhere. Oh man. Okay. okay. All right, baby. I can't bring the camera up because it'll get water on it. You just like hang it off the top. <laughs> Put the water in my face. Huh? Mm, okay, guys. Here's that oh, a little yeah. bit of water. This is that expert level off grid stuff right here. It's like a winter wonderland out here. Well, I have to come out every couple hours. All right, baby, it's been fun. Also, we didn't have a shower installed in our bus this first year, but we still needed to keep clean and get a shower somehow. We had a solar shower bag, but during snowstorms and when it was gross out, there's no way that the sun was gonna warm that up. The shower bag is hung up by these bungees and recycling water through. Um, so right now I'm emptying out, filling up this jug. It'll be just fine. So before we put the rest of this Before I put the hot, hot in, I like to drain the cold oh. out first so that when the hot goes in, there's less 
cold dilutant to uh, keep it from getting warm. We're pretty close though. Yeah. Obviously, totally when like it's 80. sunny, like extremely sunny and warm outside, we'll just be able to throw this bad boy on the roof and have this black side heat all of the water we up. Get a patch when we get back, though. Yeah, but it's not warm more. enough right now to do that. No. Tavi um, <laughs> likes <laughs> to attack this tree. Tabby. And sent Chad on a little mission <laughs> once again. This specialized cat wrangler. Oh boy. Okay. Oh wow. Oh no. <laughs> All of the snow on. on our paws. We realized we can't make lunch because both of our pots are boiling water for our shower. So I made us a little mm -hmm. avo toast snack with some hummus. And I looked over at my lovely, lovely face. <laughs> if you question that we need a shower. There's just a random stick kind of just through his hair. It's kind of like... Yeah, for easy, easy access. Hmm. <laughs> it took us about four hours to get all that water hot. <laughs> it really did. And now the, the bag has a leak, so we have to use it all. Otherwise, it's just going to leak out. So, um, yeah. I am getting a little water on the heater over here. Yeah. It's kind of a contrast because you got nice heat on this side, which is wonderful. And then you have the door it's on this freezing side. freezing cold. And there's like a big draft coming in from the bottom. Yeah, so yeah, really great. my left side's really cold, but my right side's super warm. At least when you're needing to warm up all that hot water for a shower, you have the fireplace going constantly. So you That's can just true. be boiling water and not using propane. That's true. We did uh, go off grid for 10 days and my friends thought that we were dead because we have propane and we have a wood stove burning in 100 square feet. And I guess that brings me to... Um, carbon monoxide detector? Is yeah, that where that brings monoxide, you to? Get a carbon monoxide detector for sure. Definitely. Um, but ultimately, you can do it. You know, if you're living in a small space, you can stay warm. Absolutely. And if, if even if it gets really cold, if you've insulated well enough, um, just your body heat alone will keep it warm enough for you to stay alive. Uh, it might be uncomfortable, but you know, if you get a wood stove and a propane heater, then you can definitely keep it at about 70 degrees. And there's something quaint about the entire experience totally. that feels very like wood cabiny and um, just the whole experience of cutting wood, or for me, the, the beautiful experience of watching someone cut wood. Um, yeah, we look it's, forward, it's quaint. We look forward to all the charming sides, all the things that we got to do in the bus in the winter. We really look forward to doing that again in our shipping container home here in the future. Um, but ultimately it was that experience in the bus in the winter, going through a Colorado winter that made us move to Maui and do bus life the next winter. Yeah. We didn't want to do it again like that. We did not. We, we honestly, if you're going through it, more power to you. Totally. We've been through it, but it's something that It's like we, a rite uh, of passage. It's, it is a rite of passage. Yeah. You have to go through it. Totally. But we don't want to do it again. No. Don't want to do it again. All right, friends. Well, that is going to do it for this one. We really hope that was some useful information or just yeah. some entertaining footage of us freezing in our bus. Since this is the end of the video and only the hardcores are watching, can I add a little a little shameless plug? Yeah, whatever you want, baby. All right, I'm going to sprinkle it on there then. Just be shameless. Um, we just recorded a podcast talking about our plans for 2020. It will be uploaded right now by the time this video is online. So I'll have it linked up in the description box below. Definitely go give it a listen and um, figure out kind of what we're doing. I'm sure we'll be announcing the details in a video in the upcoming weeks. But if you want to know now... And I just have this microphone like gently coming into the brain. It's okay. Well, we will see you next week. Sorry this video was a day late. Love you guys. Love you guys. Live zealously. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Uh, we're in the middle of the woods somewhere, I don't know, question mark, in the middle of Oregon. Do you have? The way I take care of the kids, I think, concerns... Oh, where'd Tabby go? Huh. I think I've just lost both the cats, baby. You did! Go find Tabby! <laughs> baby, look at her, look at her, look at her! Oh, there she goes. So there's one creature on the bus who likes the wood stove more than we do. It's true. I'll give you one hint. <laughs> she is always sitting right She burns her tail stove. all winter. 
She's burnt her little eye whiskers off because she hangs out like right off the ledge. You're gonna concern people just a little bit. <laughs> Not like cray cray uh, burnt off. No, just a little bit. I could just, just see people being like, you let your cat? Just a little bit. Oh my gosh, Tabby, how cute are you? Uh, a lighting of ice inside, inside them. of them because they somehow are colder than so you're gonna go up on the roof brass monkeys ass in alaska solar power us oh, wow up in West Virginia. it's colder than the brass monkeys ass in alaska out here oh wow uh-huh man it's colder than the witch's tit that's a good one too okay this one needs like the little cracks in the snow these ones so that it's not as chilly. Find another one. There we go. <laughs> it's gonna chill there. Oh! <laughs> oh god. Oh god. Lost a foot. Did it go all the way in? Yeah. Oh no, baby. <laughs> oh no. 